Welcome to my channel or welcome back. A lot of people have gotten pregnant during this pandemic and during the beginning didn't know what to expect. Wanted to learn from this parent who gave birth just a month before this pandemic. It's almost been a whole year. The anniversary is coming up and it's just unbelievable how we've had to live over the last year. I wanted to share this video from a perspective of a postpartum mom just because the postpartum period is often very isolating mostly because of like the bounce back culture so i know that we're all over this pandemic we are completely done with how it's made us feel some of us are still very much worried about covid and we're still remaining socially distanced and maybe we have family members at home who are more susceptible to getting sick. It's really hard to live that way, especially for a year and especially during the postpartum period. So this story is about someone named Kennedy. Kennedy gave birth to her second child on February 24th of 2020. This was a planned cesarean since she had a cesarean with her first child and felt comfortable with having another one. Not many providers offer VBACs in the surrounding areas. It's okay to choose to have a cesarean if that's what you're comfortable with and you like your provider and all of that good stuff. Kennedy explains that she loved the doctor that delivered her baby. Her whole birth experience was really smooth and relaxed compared to her first unplanned cesarean. The hardest part for me was the spinal block. It was really tricky with my first two. After they finally got it to take, the doctor let me know exactly what she was doing the entire time and pulled the curtain down when I came out so I could see immediately. I specifically asked that he be given to me as soon as they made sure there were no issues and wait to weigh, measure, and wipe him off. They were more willing to let me have a golden hour with him while they put me back together. So Kennedy's cesarean sounds very parent friendly and it almost sounds like a gentle cesarean and that's something that I'll put right here and you could have the option of a gentle cesarean if you're scheduling one. I shared a gentle cesarean on my channel from my friend who actually planned her cesarean as well. She's also a doula and trauma informed. You can totally look for a provider that offers gentle cesarean or ask your provider if they can take the drape down or offer a clear drape. And Kennedy mentioning the golden hour is also super important because a lot of people who give birth by cesarean want that golden hour and they still wanna bond with their baby and they should still be able to. The golden hour is this and I'll share that with you as well but it can be very beneficial to your baby if you are planning to breast or chest feed or feed your baby with your body after cesarean, after vaginal birth, after any kind of birth. Kennedy also said that this was standard for her hospital now, so I love to hear that. I love to hear hospitals changing what they do and going along with things that are more evidence-based rather than something really old and doesn't really make sense anymore for birthing people. So that's awesome. I'm really proud of Kennedy for also just doing that and asking about it. It's awesome to have that sort of knowledge and to ask your provider. She said the nurses I had were fantastic and so kind. The only issue I had the entire stay was the pediatrician. She came in while the baby, still less than 36 hours old at this point, was nursing and said, oh, he's not nursing. He's just using you as a pacifier. You're not a pacifier. You're a mama with colostrum. Don't let him do that. I almost lost my mind, she said. I made sure to let the nurses and lactation consultant know that she was telling new moms that they may not know better and potentially ruining their breastfeeding journeys so early on. Aside from that, every single person involved was very helpful. She said that Kennedy is being used as a pacifier and she's not a pacifier, she's a mama with colostrum. So wouldn't nursing your baby more often make sense? so they can get all the colostrum they want until your milk comes in because that makes a lot of sense to me. Colostrum is amazing, it's so beneficial, and obviously the pediatrician knew that. I just want y'all to remember that your pediatrician, unless it says that they are also a lactation consultant in their title, are typically not lactation consultants. Always consult with a real lactation consultant. I hate that Kennedy had to hear that. I'm also glad that Kennedy spoke up. It's really important because she could have helped a lot of parents that way. Kennedy's recovery after her cesarean was harder than her first cesarean. She needed no pain medication after either. She had stitches on the inside and glue on the outside, so all I had to do was easily wash it with water and pat it dry. The hardest part was getting up and down. Once I was up for sitting, I was fine. I would say I was healed by two or two and a half weeks. I like that they're doing the glue and stitches on the inside on most birthing people now. Seems like it's a lot better healing-wise. 
Kennedy says that COVID was already full blown by the time we left the hospital, but we hadn't been locked down yet. It was extremely hard because I was home with a 23 month old and a newborn while my boyfriend was at work. And now I had to be super careful who I was around, both kids to help me if I needed it. Even getting groceries was a struggle because I didn't want to leave my brand new breastfed baby at home to go grocery shopping, but we couldn't all go. So my boyfriend did all of our shopping for months. And honestly, this is probably what a lot of y'all's Households looked like unless you're not so worried about COVID, but I know that this is kind of what my household looked like because my boyfriend was already an essential worker, so he would get things while he was out, but then we just started doing grocery pickup instead of anyone going out whenever things locked down. That's already really hard. Your brand new mom can't really get out and get that grocery shopping done alone. And I just want to say that grocery shopping or doing chores isn't always self-care. For some people, it might feel great for their anxiety and to get things done and pick up. And I know that I like to go grocery shopping just so I could be able to talk to people before because I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have anyone to talk to when I'm at home. But at the same time, you're still doing all these chores and the workload of a parent, a new parent or a new mom is crazy. Like, people say that we do nothing, but we're literally doing five things at once all the time. And grocery shopping and chores and stuff like that may not be self-care to some people. Imagine not having those moments of socialization. So Kennedy said that she did have the support of her boyfriend and her mom. My boyfriend was fantastic with keeping our toddler busy so I could focus on healing and taking care of a new baby. My mom was super helpful with doctor's appointments when my boyfriend had to be at work and I couldn't take both children alone. COVID absolutely impacted her postpartum experience. Kennedy said that she is breastfeeding and did see a lactation consultant before leaving the hospital, but baby had a tongue and lip tie that needed looked at as nursing was leaving blisters and extremely painful. So there wasn't much else we could do except try to keep teaching him to latch correctly until he could see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. He and I actually fixed his latch ourselves and by the time we saw the ENT, there was no reason to revise either tie because they were no longer bothering nursing. Her boyfriend has been so supportive. I failed nursing my first child by three weeks, so he knew how important it was for me to do well this time and did whatever he could to make it easier. He's 100% supportive. If I had a nurse in public, he's helped me latch baby in the past while we were trying to figure things out and has never once pushed me to stop, cover up, hide our nursing. It has helped us make it this far tremendously. Support is a massive, huge, gigantic thing that all new breast or chest feeding parents deserve and are worthy of. But a lot of us don't have that support. And I hear this a lot that people believe that they failed with their first child because they weren't able to as nurse as long as they did with their second and maybe they feel guilty about being able to nurse their second child. Kennedy didn't say that, but she did say that she felt like she failed. And I feel so bad for the parents that feel this way because they didn't fail. She did her best with the information and support that she had at the time. And that's all you can do if you don't have support or any of that. Kennedy said that raising any child right now is terrifying, but to have this new vulnerable immunocompromised baby is rough. I was scared of every germ and did nothing but nurse and clean for months. Now that he's 10 months old, I've relaxed a lot as far as feeling like he's going to get sick but the fear is definitely still there and scary my biggest piece of advice is to trust your instincts if it's not something you feel comfortable with ask questions and know that you have options I keep seeing people say that they were almost forced to give them baby formula induced having baby taken away mom with covid positive test and it makes me feel so bad that they don't feel like they're in charge of this baby and that they just carried and birthed if you aren't okay with people visiting baby holding baby taking baby in public whatever do not let people make you feel like you're being overprotective a new baby is precious but you feel is necessary to protect that baby the only thing that i would have changed would be not trying for a VBAC. but i was so scared to have to go to a whole new set of doctors that close to delivery and be 45 minutes from home where my toddler was sick with the flu. And again, we have parents should always do what they're comfortable with, but know that you do have options and you can fight for your VBAC. And I'm so sorry that you kind of felt like you wish that you had a VBAC, Kennedy. I know that that is really hard to feel whenever you have this birth that you wish that you could have had in your mind and it went another way completely. But I am proud of you for your gentle cesarean and asking questions and being informed. I think a lot of us have never heard of people challenging 
people in the medical system, I think that we often see obstetricians as authority figures rather than someone that we hire and we choose to catch our babies. They're not there to deliver your baby for you. You're there to birth your baby and they just are there and are supposed to help along with the process. So you should be in charge of your birth. Know that you do have options like Kennedy said, but I think the most difficult thing about this is that people often don't have support to back them up. It makes it really difficult to feel like we have a voice in all of this. So Kennedy shares a little bit more about her postpartum depression and anxiety. She said it was awful. She struggles with anxiety already in her day-to-day -day life when she's not pregnant or having babies. It was hard to tell what is me normally and what is from postpartum depression. But she says that she literally couldn't stop cleaning because all she could think about was him getting sick from anything, COVID, flu, you name it, and dying. I think that has been a lot of people's fear this year with COVID, but especially those of us who are more prone to anxiety, that this pandemic has really brought out a lot more mental health issues among everyone. She said, I have this horrific fear that something, either sickness or someone was gonna take him from me. Like all of these kids, keep going missing stresses me out so badly to the point of panic attack. The PPD symptoms kind of played into PPA. Like I felt so alone, even with help, and then I would feel so overwhelmed that I would have a panic attack. I eventually had no choice but to go back on my medicine from before pregnancy. And again, it sounds like Kennedy made the best choice that she could have made in that situation. It is okay to be on medicine. It's what you think is best for you. And if that's something that's always worked for you, do what is best for you and not what's best for other people. But there are ways that you can not feel so alone and there are ways that you can kind of combat that anxiety too. I like guided meditation, I like mindfulness, I like doing things that make me feel comfortable like drinking lavender tea and just giving myself understanding and compassion. I think on Facebook in general, it helps to like hide posts that make you anxious. So if you're on that same boat, you can like unfollow people, you can unfollow things, you can block words, I think on Facebook. So all of that might be really helpful to you. So many new parents are on the same boat of being afraid to go out, being afraid of their children or loved ones. I know we're tired of hearing about COVID and this pandemic. We're tired of all these changes that have been made in our lives. And we're tired of hearing that it's gonna get better because it's been a year and it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. I hope that this video was helpful to you. You're all impacted mentally by this and it's okay to talk about. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you'd like, and I'll see you next time.